We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Susie Pruden, and welcome to Susie. Pr- no, welcome to Mastermind Live with Susie Pruden. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. And this is LATalkLive.com. And if you go to www.LATalkLive.com, you can hear us live. And I'm here with my guest, Jason Nelson. He's an extraordinary man. I met Jason about six, eight months ago uh, through CEO Space. And rather than memorize his bio, I'm going to read it to you. And then Jason and I will have some conversation. And you'll get some great information. Jason Nelson is a defining voice of soul-based living. For over a decade as a spiritual life coach and author, he has helped thousands of people through his international programs connect more deeply with their soul to heal, channel, intuit, and manifest their life purpose. His mission is to give people simple, grounded, practical tools to be applied in everyday life that provide tangible proof of our power to co-create our own life and destiny. As a result, one opens up to their fullest potential, exemplifying a new way of living, free with peace, power, and purpose. If you want to learn more, go to www.jason, that's J-A-S-O-N, Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N, dot info. You'll find out more. Jason is the author of Age of Soul, A New Way of Living from Your Soul. And he has a brand new book coming out next Monday, October 15th, called Empower Our Children, God's Call to Parents, How to Heal Yourself and Your Children. Let, this book offers spiritual solutions that inspires conscious parenting and healing your own inner child. And if you'd like to hear more about this groundbreaking book and be on the first, be one of the first, To get a copy, go to www.jasonnelson.info and sign up for Jason's email list where you'll also receive a 13 chakra grounding and healing meditation and be the Mm -hmm. first to hear about this new book, Hitting the Shelves, October 15th. So Jason, tell us about this book. This this book is, is by far my most important adventure. It empowers us as adults. And in doing so, in healing our own inner child and connecting to our own spiritual self, we are role models and examples to empower children. And it's empower our children on the notion that every child on this planet is He's truly ours. our child. Yeah. And, and that by seeing children that way, I mean, we can have world peace in one generation because they're the future leaders and parents of tomorrow. What inspired you to write this book? Well, probably my inspiration came before I even thought about the book from when I had the opportunity to be stepdad for a year and a half with two girls, 11 and 3. And and that was just one of the most precious experiences I've ever had. And their mother and I really took a, an empowered approach and as soul-based approach as possible but then come to find that that was the seed that was planted that was to activate me and open me up to the divine coming through and and delivering these messages uh, through process that some know as channeling. You told me a story about one of the children who had misbehaved Mm -hmm. and how her, her mother handled it and what what happened through the way she handled it, rather than getting all upset and angry, she took a whole different approach. Could you tell that story? That's a really neat story. Sure. It, it was a little girl. She was three. Her name's Sage. And I learned this from the mother. She had already developed this with her, her first child, the 11-year-old, Beth. Stop for just a second. If any of you have kids or grandkids... This is a very, very, very important story on how to switch your behavior, which can totally change your child's behavior in a very positive and empowering way. 
So we can call this soul-based discipline okay. versus ego-based discipline, where we're teaching and empowering instead of punishing and even harming. So little Sage, you know, she she does what she does. You know, we set certain guidelines for the home, and she goes outside of them. We we do a timeout, but timeout is really a connection time. It's where then that she's not sitting in the corner. She's not herself. in the corner with her nose to the corner. She's not getting yelled at. Truly, if if we're if we're in a position of frustration or or being reacting or triggered. We want to just have her sit. We want to go and, and breathe through that and come until we can come from an observant, loving place, you know, a true loving place. And that's that's the only place we can come if we want to if we want to experience a soul based discipline. And she's sitting at the table and I sit down with her. And and the first thing that I say, and it's got to be true and authentic, is I love you. I love you. And you you say that and it sets the tone and it it makes that immediate connection that they're safe that they're accepted no matter what they did and that right. they're loved and then you go on and you want to understand so you ask her you know what happened what do you have that you'd like to say about it and it's not she needs to say i'm sorry i'm sorry and that's it end of story which is oftentimes the case you know and an apology and then it's done and over with and except it's never done and over with when you have that response, mm -hmm. it always lingers. Mm -hmm. So your your way of doing it allows it to you to work through it, so it has a completion mm -hmm. without a make wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's stepping into understanding. You know, wanting to learn, wanting to understand, instead of wanting to blame and prove. Right. It's it's a whole different paradigm. Right. And she goes on. Well, uh, I did it because of this. I did it because of that. And you know, we go on to just explore it. So it's an exploration and almost like a treasure hunt of finding and revealing the reasons of why and helping her to understand why these guidelines are in place. Really, though, helping her to understand, not as a dictator, as a teacher. And then, you know, it's, oh, okay, and she gets it. And, you know, sometimes she doesn't want to go and sit down and have the, the connection conversation time. That's okay. She could be frustrated, but she still does it. You know, because it's a loving space. And it's interesting what, what came from that process is, you know, she made friends with the little boy next door. And if he does something uh, outside of the guidelines of the home or, you know, if she if he gets upset and, um, you know, reacts and or, right, something like that, that she's recognized in the home as as deserving a conversation, a timeout connection conversation. She goes, okay, we got to go have a talk. And she'll take him by the hand, little hand, and go and sit down, and they'll have a talk. And it's just amazing how, how kids can be teachers too. Kids are teachers. Yeah. We have to pay attention. I love watching my son parent because I'm amazed what a fabulous father he is. And I've told him many, many times his patience with his two boys is just overwhelming because I certainly wasn't that patient when he was little. And it's embarrassing on some level because I I think if, if, if I had been that good a parent, he would have had a better childhood. Of course, then I'm in make wrong and beat up, so I have to get out of that too. He's so funny one time. I was apologizing to him as an adult for doing something to him when he was a child and say, being nasty or mean or, or stupid, whatever it was. And he turns to me and goes, it's okay, Mom. I turned out all right. It was very sweet, <laughs> very sweet. So you have, you, 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 how long have you been doing this work? Since 2001. Yeah. And I how had, did you get started? Well, I, the, the medium story, not the long story, not the short, but the medium story is that I, I was feeling a longing for understanding the way the universe works, plain and simple. And I took every class at community college. Like I was there for five years and not because I was failing, but because I really didn't feel satiated and I wasn't a religious person. My family didn't go to church and, you know, didn't practice a spiritual faith particularly, but I would say they were spiritual, right? They were loving, they were empowering, they were spiritual. So I was finding my own way, which I think was a benefit to me to be able to find my own way. Yes. My path was music. 
I ended up determining because that was my passion. I said, oh, you could do this for a living. I found a music industry program at California State University, Northridge. And I, I graduated from there with a degree in music. But something happened in 2001, which was a explosion around 4th of July, a loud explosion that, that damaged my hearing. And to the point where I, I couldn't do the music. I couldn't produce it. I couldn't record it. I couldn't play live. Um, you know, my whole ro world kind of came down around me. And I, surprisingly, after a month, I said, okay, now what? <laughs> I mean, I'm still shocked that I it only was a month to where I got to that point because my whole world was music. And on my 25th birthday, August 31st, 2001, a couple months later, I was answered. And, you know, I had been reading a few books and just trying to understand things. And this presence came to me. And... I had, I had known that, you know, God comes to people, uh, right. know, people in the Bible or religious texts and things, but I didn't know it would happen to me, but it happened that night. I was given a journal for my birthday. I'm in bed that night thinking what to write in it. It's the first physical journal I've ever owned, and, and this presence comes in, and it fills me, and it was undeniable. You know, some things are just undeniable. Every cell in your body feels it and knows its truth. And the, the lights in the room got brighter. As I remember it, there was a stronger glow in the room. It was like something out of a movie. And this voice spoke to me and gave me my purpose and where I'd be going and where the world would be going. It spoke to me for two hours and came back to me every night for two weeks. And, Did you write all this down? And I wrote it all down in this journal. And it kind of became my instruction booklet for what I was going to do in this life, where I was going next. And Are it, you on track? It really set the stage for, for where I would be today. And so far, everything's come true. Wow. It was said in there I was going to meet a, a woman, a very special woman that was... I forget the exact words, but essentially was w that I was going to do this work with. And I met Catherine Beck, my teacher, at 82 years old in January of 02, and she grounded everything for me. She was a, a healer, a world-class healer and teacher for 50 years, just tops. And she really put it in perspective, and I began teaching and leading groups of my own, and, and it just kind of evolved from there. So you have a, an event coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw it here, and I wanted to mention it because you just said that you do you're a teacher and you do events, and this is this um, this is Saturday, October thirteenth at the Santa Monica in Santa Monica, and it's free. It's called Activating Your Soul Presence. It's from one to four at the Sunset Park Church in Santa Monica. And if you want more information on that, you can contact Jason at what's your email address? Info at Jason Nelson dot info. And if you want to call in and ask us questions, you can call 323-247-7443. And you may have some questions that your soul is wanting to know. Once again, 323-247-7443. So talk about purpose. Yeah. Well, purpose is, is one of the, the two main points that I work with with almost every client. The other is relationships. Um, but peace, power, and purpose are my, my three points that I work in my coaching and teaching. And the purpose is obviously our purpose. Power is the spiritual abilities we have, tapping into those. And peace is personal transformation. The, the purpose is especially fun for me because we all have this kind of grand overarching purpose that if we tap into it, it brings a little more peace to, to our hearts. We all want to know our reason for being and belonging. You know, there's that part of us. And then there's these milestones along the way. And ident identifying the milestone where we're at and the next milestone is very helpful. But then there's all the micro steps. Yes. And, and we forget to look at the micro, micro steps. We're always looking at the big, huge whatever it is in front of us, instead of all the little steps that we have to take to get mm -hmm. to and through that big thing, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes we feel defeated because um, either we say what our, this grand purpose is or we feel it or intuit it or get some guidance with it. And it's like, oh, wow, but that's so big and it's so far away seemingly. And 
it's it's so important to focus on those micro steps. What is what is my purpose in this moment today with Susie? You know, in in this interview, in this show, what's what's this purpose? You know, how am I being present with the purpose of now and tomorrow and and et cetera? And that's where our our inner guidance system really comes into play, right? That intuition, that higher spiritual guiding force in, in the one's part life. that knows. The part that knows, yeah. And every single one of us has that part. And the challenge is, and you may be facing this challenge sometimes. Is, is it real? And the answer to, to that simply is yes. And usually the first decision that you make is the right decision. Mm -hmm. And then second guessing is then the ego getting involved saying yes, but maybe if, what mm -hmm. if. There, and, and it's going with the gut. It's like when I moved here to California. Mm -hmm. I had been living in New York and I was vacationing in Hawaii. And I was on the beach and I was going to go back to New York. And I was with my boyfriend. He was going to go to San Francisco. And I didn't want to live with him in New York, and I didn't want to live with him in San Francisco. So I said, what's 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 in New York for me? And there was nothing there. And I said, um, what, what's, what's there for me? And pink neon, the sign came across my mind saying nothing. <laughs> so when Jonathan came out of the water, I said, you want to move to Los Angeles? And it was just like that. And he said, sure. And so we did. And that was 25, 27 years ago. Yeah. And there was no, there was nothing in particular mm -hmm. that brought me here other than I knew I had to be here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that, that's that intuitive knowing, that inner yeah. knowing. It's a, it's just a, a knowing without a reason. Just, I know. I know. I know and I go and I act. And, and that's one of the four qualities, the intuitive qualities. And then seeing is another one. And you, you actually, that was in there too, the, the neon of nothing. Right? Yeah. So that's a seeing, intuitive seeing. And then we have hearing. And that may be a thought that comes in. Well, what happened was, I, 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 that reminds me, I had the thought, why should I go back to New York? And there was no sound. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no sound. Okay, what's there for me? Nothing. I saw that. So there was the seeing and the hearing. Mm -hmm. The non-hearing is just as much hearing as hearing. Mm -hmm. And so, but we have to trust it, and sometimes it gets very scary. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you think about the changes that you want to make in your life, and they're scary, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be scared. When you started your work, did it ever scare you? It still does. <laughs> <laughs> I I I have I have focused on on refining my my inner capabilities of intuition and healing and manifestation every day. I have I have worked on the personal transformation every day. And I, I am the, the biggest advocate of it's a journey. And this is yes, life. Yes. And let's let's embrace it yes. and and just see it that way. And then we don't get let down. We just see the next opportunity as I call them instead of you know like I had a client today ask me he said how do you feel when someone cancels their appointment? And I said, well, I actually get happy because then I can, I can do some other work. And he says, you know, it's like you get happy. I said, yeah, because if they're not, I'm not going to be working with them. I've always got something to do. It's not that I'm just going to sit there and 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 wait around because I've always got something to do. Mm -hmm. He said, I take it like someone's just kicked me in the stomach. And I said, I think you better change that. Because there will be, because I canceled on him one time, and he got so bent out of shape. And I said, you've got to take it. That this is, we're all just doing ourselves. Nothing's personal. Nothing is personal. Woody Allen said, I think it was in Annie Hall, divorce isn't even personal. We're just doing ourselves. And whoever shows up is who shows up, and it's got nothing to do with anything out there. It has everything to do with what's going on in here. So if someone cancels, that's got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And so, as you say, it's a journey, and, and an, it's a, it's a practice and an opportunity. Like you, you see everything as an opportunity. I do. I I had the opportunity to to <laughs> interview you for my book launch as a main featured uh, interviewee, and that was that was amazing. And that's what I noticed is everything the the way that you share is not glass half full, it's glass full. Glass full. And if we see everything as an opportunity, I, I'm the same way. I, 
to the best of my ability, right? A client. Well, we do have our moments. We have our moments. We're human beings, but That's when we break ice cubes. But I, <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. It's like this store closes, and instead of panicking, say, "Wow, great! There's space and time and energy in my life that's just opened up for something even more magical and I know. beautiful." Yeah, <laughs> I know, and I practice it every single day, and it is a practice. There's um, two years ago, mm-hmm. I was supposed to be speaking at an event where I spoke for the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I had, and it was a very big event, and it was a very um, monetarily positive event. Mm-hmm. And two days before the event, I had a funny feeling that it wasn't going to happen. So I called to get my room and my schedule, and I said, oh, you're not coming this year. I went, really? Mm-hmm. And I thought, uh, it, I had my, my moment, my moment, of, oh, no. And then, wait a second, something better is going to happen. As soon as I said that, I heard this gigantic door close. Mm-hmm. And in an, that same instant, these French doors in my mind opened. Mm-hmm. And I saw these vast hills, and it was just incredible. Donna comes out of her office, and I said, Donna, I'm not going to this event. I've been canceled. She goes, oh, no. I said, wait, 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 wait. Shift that. Something better is going to happen. That night, I was speaking at a networking event. And whenever I speak, I always offer people a free half-hour consultation with me. And by the way, for those of you who are watching or listening, you too can have a free half-hour consultation with me. Just call my office, 310-640-8885. That's 310-640-8885. And so I offered it to the audience. And the next mm-hmm. day, I got a lot of cards. I called all these people, mm-hmm. and there was a woman that I talked to, and she, and I told, and she said, "I just love what you said last night. Would you like to be speaking at an event that I'm holding on Sunday?" Now Sunday was the day I was supposed to be in Northern California. And if I had been in Northern California, I wouldn't have been able to speak at this event. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Sure." Mm-hmm. So I went, and I got to her place, and there was this big sign on the on the gate, Black Business Women Rock. And I walked in, there were 70 people there. I'm the only white person. Mm-hmm. I had never had that experience before. And it was a great experience. I had a wonderful time. I called her the next day and I said, do you know you have a business with what you produced yesterday? She said, no. I said, do you own the URL? She said, no. I said, buy it. I said, and I can coach you on how to build it as a business. And she's already started and it's growing. And then she said, you know, I would really like to be a coach. And I used to work for AT&T, and they give a certain amount of money every year for us to improve ourselves so that we can improve our skills. Mm. Um, Would you be interested in working with those of us from AT&T who would like to work with you? We'll talk about nearly falling off my chair, you know, as I twist my arm. (laughs) I said, of course I would, and see, that's what happened. And I get to coach now people from AT&T. AT&T pays it, and what's happening is it's – the work that they're doing with me to become coaches, mm-hmm. they're using in their organization at AT&T, which is improving their sales, improving mm-hmm. their communication, and improving the environment in their workspace. So that's how that door closed and the French doors opened. So if a door closes, watch for those French doors to open because they always do. Yeah. I, You know, this this something came to my mind as you were sharing your story that's probably meaningful for a lot of people uh, and that is you hear about the economic downturn the economic downturn the economic downturn financial you know duress and all this this type of people losing their jobs you know transitioning and of all the clients that I've worked with in that situation who we flipped it into seeing wow this is an opportunity yes you know yes let me ask you a question with what you were doing before, was were you passionate about it? Did you wake up in the morning and think, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to the office, or, or better yet, did you have trouble falling asleep because you couldn't wait to get up? And go to the office. Well, of course not. I, you know, I didn't like my job. It was, you know, and they have their story about it. And I say, that's what this this time we're in is all about. It's all about that the external circumstances are inspiring us, forcing us, 
really encouraging us to go within and find what does inspire us and and makes and us passionate. Do it. Get up in the morning and do it. And I think that's our role as coaches and and other supporters out there is is we're here to encourage people to step up into their dreams. Something that's going to make them so happy that you know they have trouble falling asleep that night before because they can't wait to get up the next morning and go do it. I had a, an experience many many years ago where I woke up in the morning and I thought, oh God. I have 18 hours and then I can go back to sleep again. And what startled me in that moment was that I meant it. Mm -hmm. I said, no, 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 you can't have this thought. Mm -hmm. This is not a good thought to begin your day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what thought would you like to have? Because mm -hmm. we get to make it up. And so I said, okay, what thought do I want? Something wonderful is going to happen today. And it did. And it does every day. So I have a sign on my computer, something wonderful is going to happen today. Mm -hmm. And it always does could be one of those little things, or it could be a big thing, but something wonderful always happens. And again, it's how we think about it and how we connect to our knowing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keeping it in a, in, in a light. Yeah. Yeah. And if those little stories, uh, you're, you're a master of the subconscious mind. And I, you know, that's, that's a lot what I work with in my sessions too. And, and so I think we agree on, on, on this subject for sure that it's about getting all parts of us on the same page so if those little voices start coming up that say otherwise to what what you believe you want and of course you deserve it right and of course you can have it and if store little voices come up that say otherwise you just you just breathe in and transform that voice into the new one and and you know we have them I still have them. They come up. Little voice comes in, and and I don't act on them. You know, I don't believe them so much well, now. Well, we're making but, them up. But they still come up. Yeah. And I just breathe with it, and I transform it into what I want to create. And every little voice that comes up, and I get it on the same page as what I'm creating, and it makes it that much more powerful and tangible, right? Oh yes. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you can get caught in a loop, mm. and your voice gets louder and louder and louder, and you all at all of a sudden turn. I said. Will you be quiet? What is this nonsense you're talking to me about? And the funny <laughs> thing is, the voice gets quiet. It's like, you know, you're in charge. And then another thing I do is I say, thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you for sharing. You know, it's just, it's just a part of the voice. You, you get to believe what you want to believe, and you always get to be right. So I always ask my clients, what do you want to be right about? And I remember in a workshop... One woman was saying, yes, but my life is really hard. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm sure it is. Why don't you change that? She said, I can't. I said, why not? She says, because my life is really hard. And I said, yes, I hear you. And so would you like to change it? And she'd say, I can't. And on that note, we're going to take a break, and I'll give you the, um, the uh, what is it, the next piece when we come back. I'm Susie Pruden. This is Mastermind Live, and you're listening to www.latalklive.com. And uh, we'll be back with you in a moment. Just you keep on holding on. Every day will be much sweeter than the day before. All you have to do is keep on holding on. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Bad Sundays will come again. Hi, LA. Are you getting out to vote on Tuesday, November 6th? I know I am. Hi, this is Julie Orlov of Pathways to Love, and I'm joining LA Talk Live in encouraging the citizens of Los Angeles to get out and vote on Election Day. As you know, this is one of the most important elections in our American history, and we need everyone in LA to register and have a voice on November 6th. 
Currently, the state of California has 6.5 million people eligible but not yet registered to vote. And about half of those voters live in L.A. County. So I'm joining the family here at L.A. Talk Live and encouraging you to register and vote on Tuesday, November 6th. And if you haven't yet registered, don't worry, you have until midnight, October 22nd, and you can now even register online. That's right, if you have a signature file online with the DMV or a state ID number, you can now register to vote at registertovote.ca.gov. And don't forget to join us here on Tuesday, November 6th for LA Get Out and Vote, our live election day coverage from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., where we are going to keep you tuned in exclusively to LA election news and poll coverage all day right here on LA Talk Live, where we are more than just talk. Hey, everybody, this is Richard Carr inviting you to join me in the radio boardroom for the new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit in my all new day and time. That's right. The new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit is moving to Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific. So don't forget the new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit now Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific exclusively here on L.A. Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. We'll see you there. Hey, this is your girl, Paris, straight from the Cousins, and you can join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Here live, bring you some great entertainment for those ears, exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream.tv, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Susie Pruden, and welcome back to Mastermind Live with Susie Pruden on L.A. Talk Live. My guest is Jason Nelson, and he has a new book coming out. And the new book is the title of, I've got all these papers here, Empower Our Children, God's Call to Parents, How to Heal Yourself and Your Children. And you can get information on that book on Jason's site, www.jasonnelson.info. And sign up for, what are they signing up for? It's a 13 chakra healing meditation. And so what does that, before I give you the punchline to my story, this is going to keep you on the edge of your seats. What does that mean? Yeah, well, it's it's basically a healing meditation that guides people through uh, what some call an aura and chakras within the aura. It's a, you get to feel the different parts of your energetic field, if you will. We have a physical body, and then we also have an energy field that makes up emotions and thoughts and, you know, everything else that's intangible. And so this this healing chakra meditation just goes through, and it clears you, and it gets you grounded and centered and can even heal you. Nice. Calms the mind. Yeah. Can you remind me what my story was? <laughs> I know I was close to the punchline, but now I forgot how I got there. I know. You know, we're so much in the moment here that it's just like... It's gone. <laughs> it's It comes and is gone. Well, it had a, it had a good ending, though, because something wonderful happened afterwards. And I just wanted to remind people that you can meet Jason this Saturday because he's going to be presenting at... Um, the Sunset Park Church from 1 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, October 13th. The event is called Activating Your Soul Presence, and that's at 1515 Maple Street. If you want information on it, just go to info at jasonnelson.info, or you can call him at 310-929-5993. Mm-hmm. Do you want to add more to that, what they can... Yeah, Expect sure. It's that. it's it's going to be a, a fun event I'm doing with a, a teacher out here, Michael Jeffries, and it's at the very least it's going to be very grounding, and you're going to feel a more deeper presence of your innermost self, the soul. And we're going to cover a lot of topics as as time permits. We might get into purpose and and give you some techniques and exercises on how to you know, just shift and heal those thoughts that we were talking about that don't serve you into ones that do. And 
um, and maybe even get in touch with your purpose, but we're going to fill it up with as much hands-on exercises and experiences. And yeah, if you'd like to come, just email me and let me know, and we'd love to have you. What happens if they just show up? Is that okay? That's that's okay, too. That's 1515 Maple Street in Santa Monica. Mm. And when I talk to people and I talk about the purpose, I have a lot of clients who are really searching mm. for their purpose. And they make it very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, the first purpose that you have here is you. That's why you came, to do you. To learn, to grow, and from that, something will evolve that will then be like a legacy or be your work. But really, as a soul being, that's who you are, this soul being, and you're here to do you. And you've got lots of little lessons and lots of little assignments that you totally have no idea what they are mm -hmm. until you're in the middle of them and you go, oh my God, this is not what I expected. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have that experience sometimes? This is not what I expected. I mean, eight months after doing Oprah, I was homeless. That was certainly not what I expected. That's a twist. Well, yeah. it takes great talent to be to do yeah. that. Yeah. And I actually... I do own it as an oppor again, it was an opportunity because mm -hmm. I learned an awful lot during that period to go from being at the top of my profession to losing everything to coming back up to the top of my profession again. Different profession, but in the same vein with healing and working with the body mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and similarly, you know, the story I shared about the explosion, the time I'm like, oh right. my God, this crazy accident how could it happen to me ah you know and we do that because um things do happen and they we don't see the the purpose of those things in the moment but i see that it wasn't just a coincidence it no. was synchronistic it yes that the path that i was on at that point and i'll 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 tell you what the path i was on i was going to clubs every night you know i was 20 24 and drinking a lot and just doing things and being out late and and it was destructive and you know i truly believe that this higher spiritual guiding force in my life and my own soul to get me on this path where i can help people right you know which which i'm i'm, I'm so grateful that i get to do that now and something that big had to happen and you hear about it all the time uh, you know I'm, I'm glad that it it was that it could have been so many things you know a lot of times people get into uh, car accidents and a year of rehabilitation or they lose a loved one and of all the things that could have happened to shock my system and totally 180 put me on a different path I'm, I'm just I'm grateful and do you it, play music now are you able yeah. to yeah 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 I have my acoustic guitar and I write songs once in a while but you know, there's there's so much that wants to get out. I know you know that too. There's there's so much that wants to get out to the world that um, I'm very passionate about spending all my time on this mission. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the uh, I hold it when that when that happened to me it was it it was in one day, all the jobs that I had had lined up for the year, irrespective of them, each other called me and canceled. My rent check bounced. Mm -hmm. I realized I had no money. I was about to lose my house, and I remember sitting in my kitchen in Topanga thinking, thank you, God, you must really love me to give me this experience because it will change my life. Wow. And the surprising thing about that thought was I meant it. And that's what surprised me. Mm -hmm. And then I went on this amazing journey, mm -hmm. and it wasn't easy, and but it was amazing, and I learned so much. And I... The work that I do today, you know, you were talking earlier about what's happening in the economy and the meme that we're living with, you know, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. with. You keep believing that and you'll have a problem. So I say, no, it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity. This is where people can say, wait a second, I don't have to do what I used to do because it's not working anymore. I can now do what I want to do and see what happens. And a whole new world will open up. People who are losing their houses and have to move will end up someplace that they needed to be in order to do something that they would never have done had they stayed in the old place. Yeah, and I often say to clients, you know, and it, it's helped me in my life to, to trust and have faith, you know, and things working out. And it's 
haven't things always worked out? Has there has there been an instance where things didn't work out? No, they did always seem to to work themselves out. I did always seem to be okay, and that's the truth of the matter. You know, 99.99% of the time, is it it does always work out. So we can have faith. I mean, that's that's real hard evidence that right. things have always worked out. And most everyone can say that, yeah, and and I can see how that helped me to get to where I am today. And so when the next thing comes up, if we can just reflect back on all the times that it did work out, yep. you know, that can help to give us the faith in the moment. And you can be scared. Mm -hmm. And you can be, you know, it's like, ah, I don't like this. And still get through it. Mm -hmm. So I know because both of us have shared different instances in our lives where things have gotten difficult. And I'm sure all of you have stories. And this is important, how you hold your story. You can hold your story as poor me, and you'll get to live in that poor me state. Or you can hold your story and, wow, what an opportunity. It may not be easy, but I'm going to make this work. And the strength that you get for yourself, but also for everybody else. And that's going back to your book, for Children, mm -hmm. when parents can hold the space for their children to be okay as they hold them the space for themselves to be okay. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times parents get upset with their kids because they're not okay in themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and this even transcends to in employers and employees, um, you know, partners in a relationship. It, this, this really applies to all types. Across the board. Across the board, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the true way to change someone is to not change them. It's to change ourselves. That's brilliant. I like that. <laughs> well, you don't want to change anybody. If they want to change, they can change. It's not up to me to say, you need to change. Mm -hmm. If if I don't like what it is that you're doing, I don't have to hang out with you. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was married, I was supposed to change. And no matter what I did, it didn't work. So I stopped trying to change and left. Yeah. And um, and I changed. <laughs> yeah. When I I I got a, a a spiritual direction from the divine to to pick up and move to Utah of all places. Never been there. Never read about it. Um, didn't know a thing about it. That's amazing. And yeah. And they said. I say they. If I say they, it's because uh, it's it's essentially just the spiritual guiding forces in my life as a whole. But yeah, God came to me and said, "Go north." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> it's like where? Move to Los Angeles. <laughs> All right. Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, when? Now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sometimes it's a big, boomy voice like that. Sometimes it's conversational. Sometimes it's more subtle. But this was one of those big, boomy voices. And and what happened was I moved up there. And then four others said, you know what? I'm, I'm also supposed to move up there. And so a few of us moved up there and didn't know a soul. And the red carpet was laid out, unlike I've ever experienced before. We... All of our lives went to levels that were beyond what what any of us could have imagined. I mean, just red carpet rolled out, uh, the perfect place and the perfect scenario and the perfect connections and meetings. And this is a, a, a strongly Mormon community. And within uh, like a month or so, I had a huge spiritual meditation group that was meeting at the library and business and. It, it was it was profound and that really permitted me to fully trust and have faith in a higher guiding force my soul divine God whatever that is to you it's there it's guiding you every moment of every day and we can we can tap into it we can learn to trust it yeah. so if someone wanted to work with you you all you said you would like to offer people an opportunity mm -hmm. why don't you let them 
the folks at home know sure. what, what they can, what, what you sure. have to offer. Sure. If, if, if you'd like to explore how I might be able to, to serve you and support you, I'd be happy to do a complimentary consultation with you. Just call uh, 310-929-5993 or go to my website, uh, email me, info at jasonnelson.info. I'd be happy for us to have a conversation and see how that might be a fit, and I can tell you about my programs. And what brought you to Los Angeles? It was, uh, I'm in Utah, and I got that voice, time to go to L.A. And I went to L.A. <laughs> and <laughs> it's time to go back to L.A. and write your first book. That was actually the message, and it's going to be called Age of the Soul. And, and I went back, and... Uh, August of 2005, I arrived. I, I was staying with family until I found a place, which was in Santa Monica, and I was actually given the exact coordinates of where that place would be, and it, it, was, a, it was a perfect place for me. I've lived there for seven years now and wrote, started writing my first book and wrote it in two weeks. Because it's a, it's a channeled book, I sit down, my hands move about as fast as they can until they get tired, and, and then I take a break and I sit down again and, and keep writing cover to cover. And then I go in and put in the formatting and chapter titles. But it essentially stays in its sequence. I wish I could write a book like that. I have to write a book. You can. Everybody can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. We'll talk more we'll, about we'll that. We'll talk more about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I write books. But I don't sit down on my hands don't just move. I, I actually think about it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to think about it, I just like to write it, because mm -hmm. I think that my higher knowing knows more than I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, you, you're, you're definitely a vessel and a channel, but yeah, you can open it up so that it's in real time, so it doesn't have to come into the mind as a thought and then move through into it can just the document. It can just come through in real time. How exciting is yeah. that? Do you teach that? Yeah, I've taught that. Yeah, I've worked with authors and taught that to them. But have you, do you do workshops on that t topic? I have in the past, yeah. Okay, so those of you who are interested in writing a book, just having it downloaded, contact Jason. Easy, and, effortless. And, and easy, effortless. <laughs> and bug him so he creates the workshop so we can all have that workshop. And what's your phone number again? Uh, the office number is 310-929-5993. And yeah. that's uh, info at jasonnelson.info. And you are listening to Jason Nelson and me, Susie Pruden. We're on latalklive.com, where LA Talk Live is more than just talk. And we're having fun here, and hope you are at home. If you'd like to call in, please call us at 323-247-7443. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Jason. And tell me more about... I want to know more about your children's book. You have a launch coming up next week. We have a big launch coming up on October 15th. And you can go to my website. It'll be on the book tab. Or you can go to empowerourchildren.com. On the 15th, it will be live. And on the 15th, we are all going to go on Amazon and purchase a book or Barnes & Noble or wherever. And then you go to the landing page and you input your receipt number and you, you're going to have access to me. many, 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 many gifts, bonus gifts that Susie's providing and others are, you know, over 50, over 50 gifts, I'd say. Wow. And, yeah. Additional gifts. So it's the, the book definitely pays for itself, but you don't need those additional gifts to buy it. The, the book contains such valuable information on how we as adults can heal and empower ourselves and and particularly empower children through doing that. So it is a process of self-discovery mm -hmm. and exploration and healing and also that with children. So whether you have children in your lives or not, the book can definitely help you, but especially if you're a teacher, a parent, a caretaker, a grandparent, anyone who has chil directly has children in your lives, this book is, is really a must-have. It's a new paradigm book on how to be a soul-based role model, soul-based parent, to uh, raise a soul-based uh, family, and, and to just really give children what they deserve. Fabulous. Yeah. So what's next after the book? 
Well, after the book, um, we're going to probably, uh, and I haven't talked about this, but we're probably going to put together a website community where everybody can go and, and it more than likely is going to be around soul-based living. Is it like a membership? More than likely. Yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because it's still in the it's still in the the dream stage but we're looking at that and then I'm gonna get started on revising my first book age of the soul and republish that under the new publishing company and I have a third book that's a third the way done and that's really exciting yeah that's uh, it's it's a working title right now but it's needless to say there's uh, there's seven books at least coming through when when God when the divine came to me and said we have books to write and he said we're going to start with seven so I I'm just going to pump these books out as fast as I can but definitely they're they're going to be you know of quality and integrity um, with what's coming through you know I want to make sure that I give them space and presence but I'm going to try for a book a year good for you yeah. And so what is one thing that you would say to people who are struggling right now trying to figure out their lives? Yeah, the best thing that we can do, because we all struggle from time to time, but for those of you who are, are really enduring a hard time, is to trust yourself. Have faith within to that inner voice. It, it, if we're going to you know, stumble and fall and pick ourselves back up, which we are, we all have, we're going to, that's life, then why not do it from going from within ourselves? And I'm, I'm just a huge proponent of that. When clients come to me and they say, I want you to, to you know, intuit into this situation, read it, read this person, read what I should do, tell me what I should do, tell me. And I, I always guide people into their to inner voice. To go into themselves. It is going to be your most useful resource and tool in this life to start doing that and play with it and just see how it works. Yeah. And the other thing is, is it's never written in stone. Mm -hmm. Things change. Mm -hmm. I was going on one path three months ago, and now I'm going on a completely different path. And I was right three months ago, uh, but I'm more right right now. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it isn't point, quickest from point A to point B. Yes, it's a straight line in that it's the quickest, but it actually goes, it goes zigzag. Yeah. It, it, it totally, because new new opportunities are presented and you have people's own minds and personalities including our own circumstances change highest benefit of all changes and so be flexible too yeah and make yourself right yeah you know you really have to make yourself right and even if you do something really stupid make yourself right it's okay yeah it really is and um it's just a learning opportunity it's like oh gee guess I shouldn't have done that okay next time I'll do it differently mm -hmm. that's how you have to hold it and nobody's wrong and nobody's broken they just people need to tweak themselves mm -hmm. and we do we need to all the time and they I love your approach with children is that when they have stepped out of line you love them back into line that is so important and and deeply desire to understand yeah. why yeah. As much as they want to know why, you know, why this, why that, deeply under want to, desire to understand why. Well, what it does is it teaches a child to go inside, mm -hmm. as, as and that's your whole philosophy. Mm -hmm. And if a child can go inside and figure it out, mm -hmm. then they don't have to have the battle that those of us who were not brought up that way have in learning now how to go inside, because it's all inside. And it's all connected. And so I love the way I just, I love that. I mean, I'm looking at a chord here and I'm thinking of the outside, which is the bad place, and the inside, which is the good place. And every once in a while we step outside and are in the bad place. And it's like you said, when you were younger and you were into music and you were doing all that stuff, and the universe said, uh, excuse me enough of that and the explosion occurred Bam. <laughs> right that was the wake-up call to get back inside mm -hmm. and when I had my wake-up call okay you're on the road for eight months um, it 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 allowed me to create more of who I am 
which is what you're saying in the way you want people to raise their children so that children become more of who they really are instead of who they think they should be. Yeah, and there's that breaking point at some point when we're a child where we accept an external version of life, someone else's version of life. And that's the breaking point where the child says, okay, um, my version's not acceptable, so I'm going to have to accept this version of life. And a lot of stuff happens at that point. It's very detrimental to the child. So we are, what we're doing is we're trying to help the child not do that. Well, you know, the Aborigines, when they, when a child is born, they look for Mm -hmm. what that child's gift is. And so they don't try and change the child. If the child is good at um, painting, they don't try to make that child into a mathematician. Mm-hmm. That child will be the painter. And if the child is good at math, the child will be the mathematician. If the child is good at healing, they foster the child's gifts. When my son was four, I saw that he would be an artist. I knew right then he's going to be an artist. And so I just kept handing him paper and pencils. Mm-hmm. and pens and just say draw and and then at nine i knew it'd be political and now at 46 he's a political illustrator and he's very very good and i just said keep doing what you just keep doing it mm-hmm. because my father was told when he was a young man he wanted to be an artist we don't have artists in our family we support artists and my grandfather gave him a steel manufacturing company so at the age of 21 he was the president of a steel manufacturing company at the age of 46. He was dead. Mm-hmm. And so what I wanted to do was to make sure that my son became who he was born to be. Mm-hmm. And that's what it sounds like your book teaches us to help our kids be. Sure, sure. And there's a, another powerful uh, approach in there that healing's revealing instead of fixing or even changing. Healing's revealing. It's just... You know, the healing process happens organically and naturally when we just get to know ourselves. And it happens that way for children when we encourage them to get to know themselves and we want to get to know themselves. And make them right. Yeah, yeah, that it's, yeah, increase that make confidence. Them right. Make them right for who they are. Mm. And they're all, they're all going to be different. I, my two grandsons are totally different. Same parents, same situation, totally different. And they're right with who they are. There's a chapter out of the book called What is Good? Question mark. And it's a short chapter that that just kind of brings to our attention how we put in boxes what a good boy, bad bad boy, good girl, bad girl, a you know, what a girl should wear, what a boy should wear, what they should do, what they shouldn't do, and these norms puts them in boxes. So we're gonna knock the walls off the boxes let all of us be who we are i'm Susie pruden this is mastermind live um, my guest is jason nelson and we are on www.latalklive.com where we are more than just talk thanks for joining us look forward to seeing you next week you are who you are. You wake up, you put on a new disguise How long did you think it would take me to realize Girl, the things you want ain't real You never tell me just how you feel Girl, you could be so very beautiful When you are who you are
take me to realize that the things you were ain't real. You never tell me just how you feel when you could be so very beautiful when you are who you are. When you are who you are, huh? Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, when you are who you are, huh? Yeah. Oh, when you are. 